Producing music is a lot like building a house. And unfortunately, a lot of people instead try to see producing music as one single aspect of building a house instead of the whole process. So here's the thing, a ton of home studio producers are trying to paint without walls. And I want you to hear me out on this. I think we can all agree that you cannot paint if you don't have walls, right? So if I'm building a house and only have the frame of that house constructed, but no walls yet, no drywall, then I cannot possibly paint. It's impossible. Yet, when I see home studio producers and students sending me music and saying, I just really need help mixing better, nine out of 10 times, that's 100% not true. This is an example of trying to paint without walls because what's happening the majority of the time, of course, not every case, but the majority is that when people are complaining that their music doesn't sound pro because they can't mix great, it's usually not even a mixing problem. They're focused so heavily on what plugins to use, how to EQ, how to compress, how to do all of these things related to mixing that they essentially neglect everything else. So it's a lot like trying to paint walls when you haven't even put them up yet because if you're trying to mix a track that was poorly recorded or poorly arranged or has crappy sound selection, then guess what? You're trying to paint without walls or very broken walls. So let's back up, shall we? But before we do, this video is totally free and made possible because of my course producer accelerator. So if by the end of the video, you're like, dang, I wanna, I wanna level up my own producing game and get the structure that you need to actually do it beginning to end, you should consider joining the over 500 producers we've helped so far. And on the day that this video is uploaded is the one year anniversary of the course producer accelerator. So we're doing a flash 48 hour sale pretty huge discount. So if you're watching this on the day or day after this video is uploaded and you want to join, get that discount, you should do that right now. I said earlier that producing music is like building a house. So let's just pick this apart a bit. When you want to build a house, what is the very first thing that you need to do? You need to have a blueprint, a guide, right? You're not going to just start digging a hole in a random patch of land and say, eh, you know, we'll see what happens. I think we'd all agree that's kind of dumb. After you have a blueprint, you're gonna start by laying a foundation, and that foundation is obviously fundamental. Without a solid foundation, you have a house that's gonna fall apart, it's not gonna last, right? So the, the blueprint in the foundation is essentially the first part of the process in producing music, and that is the song. If your song is not great, then your production cannot be great. Now. I'm not saying don't ever produce a song that isn't the best song you've ever made. And if you're new, then you should produce everything you write. And that's to get the reps in. Repetition is key. But we're talking about the concept, right? So track along with me. The blueprint should be the vision that you have for that song as you hear a demo or piano and vocal or whatever it is that you're gonna start with. It's the core song. Your blueprint is then the mental vision that you're gonna have for that song in the end, okay? So when an architect works on a blueprint, they aren't making it saying, it might look like this, it might not. I guess we'll just see, right? No, of course not. They're gonna be making a very specific plan. Now, this is a little bit different because in the producing world, you can make a really great game plan and the creativity it might strike where you least expect it. So that blueprint is not as immovable as a house blueprint, but nonetheless, you need one. So what I'm saying is that a house blueprint, you're not gonna change anything because that's gonna mess up the math. So, but in music, you want a blueprint, but that blueprint can be subject to change as creativity is happening. So there's that creative component that it's, this analogy isn't perfect. So what kind of soundscape is your song gonna have? What kind of textures is it gonna have? What will the vocal production be like? Drums, bass, et cetera, et cetera. So here's an example of what a production blueprint might actually look like if I'm producing a track, I'm showing each section of the song, how I'm going to approach it from a sound standpoint, arrangement perspective, what's actually happening in each section. And notice that no section is 100% the same, verse one and verse two are different. We're gonna to touch on that here in just a second. I rarely produce a song without actually thinking about the pieces that I want. And of course, like I've said, it's subject to change, but that blueprint is your ally because when you feel stuck, you can go back to it and ask, what had I originally wanted to do here? And as I've improved, I don't have to do a physical blueprint like this. I can do it mentally, but if you're just getting started, you should absolutely write this stuff down. So if your song has crappy structure, the melodies don't make sense or are boring or the chords aren't working, then guess what? That's like having a really crappy blueprint which messes everything else up with the foundation. Answering the question, what makes a great song, is a conversation for another time. But I think we can all agree that some songs are just not great and others are. So next in the process is framing, right? At this point, when you are building a house, you're getting the actual structures in place that will hold it all up. So to me, this is where producing becomes more practical in terms of building an essential arrangement, putting down the bass and drums and other primary elements in the song, getting a dummy vocal recorded perhaps. And like how a house is gonna have different rooms, which all require different dimensions and different approaches, your song has different sections in different moments that will require different 
choices. So this is where that blueprint comes in. One of the key mistakes I see in home studio producers is building up their production without differentiating moment to moment. If verse one and verse two sound exactly the same, but just different lyrics, uh, guess what? You probably just lost a great opportunity to make your song a lot more interesting. But what if instead verse one, was softer, no drums, minimal bass, has this feeling of rising or tension building, but it's not quite arriving yet, right? And then verse two has drums, you have bass, things are feeling resolved or resolute. Of course, this is just one example. I'm trying to paint a picture of this for you, but the key question is this, how are you differentiating section by section in your song? If every single section sounds the same, it's a really big problem and listeners are going to leave. So here's a test you can do. I do this all the time with my students. Take a song and randomly skip to different moments in that song and ask, does every time I skip around sound different or does it all just sound the same? So start at the beginning, 25 seconds, 40 seconds, a minute and a half, two minutes, three minutes. If it's all sounding the same, that's a problem. You might be shocked how often it is that things do just sound all the same. The same bass part, same drum part, same keyboard part, same, same guitars. So everything is sonically sounding the same. There's no differentiation. So some of the things that you can do to change section by section is change the sounds, alter the soundscape. Uh, another is to change dynamics or volume. Another is to change the articulation of what those instruments are actually doing. So say one moment is more you know, sustained guitar, and then the next moment is more plucked palm guitar or sustained piano and then like more plucked piano or you name it. There are a million ways to do this, but one way or the other, not every room in a house is identical. That's boring, right? So if we're building a custom house, you're going to want every room to feel unique and special. So do the same for your song. So what happens next? Of course, this analogy is not perfect, right? There's, there's the plumbing, HVAC, the siding, all the other components, which I'm sure we could find links to with music, but I'm not going to go that deep. But the next things would be something like flooring, right? Like are you going to do laminate? Are you going to do tile? Are you going to do carpet, right? You know, building out the light fixtures and adding nice light fixtures, adding texture to the house. So we're not at the painting, right? We're not at painting yet. This is how you actually approach arrangement in terms of sound design, what your vocal production is doing to add texture in the whole track. So we aren't done producing. This is not mixing, yet this is so key, and this is where you essentially start to dress up up the actual production. This is adding an ear candy, finding new sounds to sprinkle in, actually getting your vocal production done, adding vocal layers and things like that. So have you ever wondered how sometimes producers can have like over a hundred tracks? I can tell you that for me, when I have over a hundred tracks in a production, it's usually because I have a lot of tracks that only happen for a moment and then they don't happen again. And that's because it's about finding ways to add dressing to the production itself, uh, like a vocal ad lib or a cool little vocal part, a sparkly keyboard part for a moment or a reverse piano a percussion fill that only lasts a second. The best producers understand the insane value in finding ways to make every moment interesting by doing things that might only happen once or twice in the whole track. And this isn't like throwing the kitchen sink, right? You don't want to just throw everything in your production all the time and everything is just like constantly happening, right? Like this might be only every four bars. It might only be every eight bars. We're talking about doing little things here and there that kind of add every single moment to have a little bit of something. If you're adding too much too fast all the time, then it just becomes confusing. Now, a disclaimer, not every track needs this. Not every song needs 100 tracks. Some might only need 20. If the song is soft and slow, more of a ballad, it's not gonna be the same as a super upbeat pop track. But even in 20 tracks, you shouldn't be just copy pasting things. You should be trying to find new ways of wrapping it up. As listeners, our brains are excited when we hear new things. So whenever a piece of ear candy happens or a little counter melody or a motif or Whatever it is that happens, it's like little breadcrumbs that keeps a listener engaged. If you walk into a house that has no light fixtures, the kitchen is bare, the flooring is just wood or concrete, and the house is basically nothing but walls and bare bones, I'm gonna guess you probably feel like that house is not finished, right? Because it's not. But so many producers stop here and only get halfway done. And finally, once that is done, you are ready to paint and decorate. Now this is the splash of color each room gets in the part that everyone sees front and center, but yet we can all agree that everything that has led up to this moment is a thousand percent required in order for the paint and decorations to even matter. Again, imagine a house that has disgusting floors and fixtures and that was designed like crap, but yet it was painted super well, has awesome decorations. I think we can all imagine that would be really weird, right? Now that's kind of what it's like when you try to mix something that isn't properly constructed, and it's why I'm so adamant that if you are not focusing on producing first and really getting that skill set down before mixing, then you're doing it wrong. But let's just imagine the perfectly constructed house. At this point, the color you choose almost doesn't matter for the paint. I'm not saying that doesn't matter at all, but the color palettes you can use are pretty wide. They can vary. It's all going to look good as long as you're not mixing colors that don't make sense together. A production that is done at a high level should be easy to mix. Let me say that again. I want you to pay attention. 
production done at a high level should be easy to mix. If you are constantly fighting to make your mix sound good, you know, a lot of the times it's because the arrangement was done poorly or the sounds were chosen poorly or the arrangement is way too dense or something else happened before mix down that caused those problems. If you're EQing the life out of every track, that probably means something went wrong before you ever got to mixing. Maybe the recording that you actually got, the source was bad. Maybe you were per performing in a bad room. Don't mishear me. You will need to EQ, but I'm talking about the over the top EQ that I see so many people doing. I can't remember the last time I had to be super aggressive with EQ shaping on a production. Yes, I, I, I'm using EQ every single day, but I mostly do it for color, not correction. But don't hear me say that painting and decoration is not important, it 100% is. Anyone who understands home design will tell you that when you paint a house, it adds a whole new life to it. And adding in those splashes of decorations, take a great house and push it over the top. Mixing can do this. If you have a solid production, mixing can push a great track over the edge into the territory of absolutely incredible. But here's the thing, a mediocre mix on a great production in a great song will still sound better than an incredible mix on a crappy production or a crappy song because your listener isn't paying attention to the mix. I want you to consider that. Your listener isn't actively thinking about the mix. What do you think they're thinking about instead? The song. And if the mix is not designed to elevate that song instead of cause distraction, it's a problem. No one usually is giving the mixing engineer a round of applause on a great track. They're applauding the singer, the artist, the songwriter, the producer, and that's because 99% of people don't give a crap about the mix unless the mix sucks. <laughs> then it's all the mixing engineer's fault. A bad mix is gonna ruin a track, but a great mix will allow your listener to not even know what even went into it. You shouldn't be mixing in a way to draw insane attention to the mix because it's over the top. Your mix should be at the service of the song in production, which again, if your song or production sucks, you can fill in the blank. So. If you build your house properly from beginning to end, you are going to have a long lasting and incredible house. But if you skip steps or skip to the end first, you're gonna be very disappointed every single time. If you want to learn producing faster, then I'd recommend you watch this video right here next. Talk soon.